Good morning and welcome to the webinar hosted by Baker Baines and myself, Daniil. Today we're going to be doing a bit of a deep dive into Inventor 2020 and some of the features that um, have become quite popular. Uh, if we look at the agenda very quickly. So we'll look at the user interface. So for the users that have looked at Inventor 2020, you'll find that there's some enhancements on the user interface. The solid sweep has been quite enhanced, which made it quite uh, a nice little tool to work with. And of course, the unwrap tool, which is a new a feature inside of Inventor 2020. Uh, and we'll just have a look at them. We'll touch on it. We'll see what the uh, feature does and how it works. We'll look at the frame generator enhancements. So there's been some really nice enhancements here. Um, we've covered this in our um, Inventor 2020 uh, webinar as well, the what's new. Um, and we've seen that it's got a really nice uh, end cap feature that's added to that, and also the way you place it and work with it. And also to end off with uh, some of the feature creation enhancements. Now, with regards to the feature creation enhancements, there's been a lot of enhancements to the user interfaces as you work with it. Also, the way that it behaves. Now, let's get into it. So if we start looking at it, we find that Inventor is the heart of the product design and manufacturing collection. Uh, you know, you've got tools to do various design work uh, from mechanical design, electromechanical, the NAS training simulation that's in there. You've got the tolerance analysis tool, which we covered in our previous webinar, cheap metal nesting, and it goes all the way to factory layout and design. But in the heart of that, you have Inventor, which drives the functions. So the strategy of it is to have a perfect connected and innovative workflow where you can keep current, okay? Uh, cloud collaboration is, is uh, available uh, from directly from Inventor. You've got the tolerance analysis that helps us um, um, define our tolerances to actually save costs on machining. Uh, but also uh, you are near the team. So you can have this uh, in innovation uh, technology being shared across different platforms. Um, we find that Forge is one of the, one of the great uh, innovators, the uh, platforms that allow you to, to connect uh, Inventor into different or various other aspects of the design environment. And of course, uh, the modernize, the long-term goal of it, if you look at the modernization of it, the way the interface looks nowadays, uh, with the 2020 release, it's much more enhanced and much more modern. And of course, any kind of expansion with Fusion and Inventor, as well as into other 3D applications. And of course, design manufacturing automation as well, where products can be automated directly from Inventor itself. Um, okay, so let's jump into Inventor 2020 and have a look at some of the features. So firstly, the user interface enhancements. Now, for the users that have not really looked at Inventor uh, 2020, yeah, you'll find that the user interface itself has been uh, beefed up or freshened up, if you look call it that. And you'll see that there's a graphical uh, change to it. It's a light theme. Uh, the icons look a bit more refreshed. Um, and also there's consistency across all of the other applications as well, not only Inventor. So AutoCAD and Revit as well will have that refreshment that's done to it. However, if we look at Inventor itself, there's been uh, the windows are more uh, the windows uh, for uh, opening up the uh, extrude command, for instance, have been more uh, refreshed to meet the theme that goes along with Inventor 2020. Another great enhancement uh, is the uh, multi monitor support. Now, uh, you know, you could have on screen, as you see, uh, the same model with different viewports on different screens and you could actually see the updates and changes as you go in. So it's a single inventor session, which allows multiple windows, okay, uh, with multiple monitors, which is really nice because, uh, you know, previously this was not supported. And in the 2020 release, you find that it's really nice to work with um, having this function. More from a productivity and performance enhancement side of it, we find that there's been a significant improvements with larger assemblies, right? Uh, and of course, in the following areas of express mode, uh, parts and pattern performance, also drawing mesh performance as well, but also AnyCAD. So AnyCAD is really great because it allows you to actually seamlessly integrate with Fusion uh, for if you're doing any general design on your models, 
bring it back to Fusion, back to Inventor, whatever updates would update Inventor, and whatever updates in Fusion would be would be updated as well uh, in, in Fusion. So the translators have been updated in here. And of course, Fusion AnyCAD, it's out of tech preview now. So it's before it was in the preview with a beta state. Now it is out and you'll find that on the 2020.1 release, this is where this functionality becomes, uh, becomes alive. So some of the workflow enhancements. So we just discussed um, some of the extrudes. You'll find that if you look at the panels on the right hand side, uh, the, the extrude command, the revolve, as well as the sweep, look very similar to each other. Now this looked like the previous, the previous release, the whole command looked something similar to this. So they have, Autodesk have adopted this throughout some of the commands as well. So it makes it more, the user interface is more, uh, more, uh, more like to each other. Uh, joints now support uh, slot centers. So as you put in a joint, you've got the slot centers that you can, that you can uh, join them to, which is really nice. And also three enhancements, okay? So the welding uh, assembly and weldment support, as well as multiple face selection support has been enhanced in the 2020 release. Now, these are some of the, uh, some of the enhancements that you'll find in the 2020.1 release. So if you haven't downloaded it yet, check up on your desktop app, you should see an update available for you. So let's have a look quickly at some of the component uh, pattern performance. Now on the left-hand side, you'll see 2019, on the right, it's 2020. And if we pattern a component, bring it down there. So the pattern preview uh, generation is quite slow, as you can see there in 2019, so it just takes a bit of time. Okay, and then we get the preview that, that kicks in. Now, if we look at, we'll look at what it looks like in 2020. Okay. And also you can see it is a bit slow. So some of the enhancements that we spoke about, especially with regards to assemblies, the performance enhancements has been quite improved. You'll see shortly when we look at the 2020 release. Right? Oh, sorry, it's still in 2019. So as you can see on the newer versions, the improvement is actually much better compared to the 2019. So these are some of the interfaces, uh, well, some of the requests from the idea station from users that already is considered and brought in, especially performance-wise of it. Um, as you can see that it's much easier, it's a lot easier to navigate and rotate it on in orbit uh, versus the previous release of Inventor. So, uh, the read-only. So we found out that there's, in 2020, there's a, re a read-only function that uh, installs uh, well in the installation of the media of Inventor itself, but it is a separate shortcut added to the standard install. So you would install that separately, right? It provides full viewing and support for IAM, IPTs, IPN files, DWG, as well as IDW files, right? So the removal of Inventor uh, view from the installer is not there, so there's no more Inventor view. And the Inventor view is still installed with products like Vault, um, and available as a standalone installation if you don't want to use read only. So, read only is actually quite nice. This is what it looks like on screen. Um, it kind of looks like Inventor a lot, however, it does not have the design function. And just to note, there's no support add in uh, for Nastran and HSM. So, going back to the Inventor strategy, okay, of keeping current, it's all based on a connected workflow, uh, allowing us to automate some of our designs, uh, but also in the manufacturing side to produce and producing from what we've done. So from a connection point of view, AnyCAD is really great. And you'll see AnyCAD and Fusion, you're finding a lot of that integration nowadays where people are using Fusion for the generative design or also mechanical design and bringing that information, that data into Inventor via the desktop app and 
connecting the two. So, you know, whatever is done in Fusion will update Inventor and vice versa. So let's look at, let's dive a bit deeper into it. The solid sweep is the first we'll look at. Now we know that with the solid sweep, uh, we find that it's been enhanced quite a bit uh, with regards to specific uh, uh, parts or types of uh, sweeps that we're doing. Uh, so the sweep, a tool body, a longer part. So now you can sweep the tool body along the path, as you can see on the image on the right hand corner there, uh, to create that uh, thread-like image. But also it's a new panel with a new interface, right? And the workflow is slightly optimized with that. And we can see it here. So in here, what we're going to do is we're going to sweep that tool body along that path. Now, if you look at it in here, uh, the, the, the tool body follows the path by default. Uh, to switch the orientation that's to be fixed, we just add the optimization inside of the tool palette itself and OK. Now, if we have a look and see what it's done, you can see how that tool body has moved across the path, giving us an indication of how it would work. Again, um, along a circular shape, if we add that in, we select our solid and we go OK, and you'll see that it cuts that tool body into the shape that we wanted or the solid that we had. Quite nice, um, a really, really nifty little tool to work with, especially if you're using things like uh, customized threads and uh, sweeps are quite a common tool to you. This is really, really nice. So you can sweep along a helical curve as you see, as you've seen earlier on. Uh, if you look at it here, the helix curve that's added to it. So this is in our 3D sketch, okay? Uh, we'd add a 3D, 3D curve to it. You can also sweep it along an equation curve. So a driven curve, for instance. So if you're using equation curves and you know uh, the equation that needs to be input into it, you could also have that created and you can sweep along that as well. And of course, a keyhole, okay? So again, here, the tool body shape may impact the performance. So if you've got some complex curves in your tool body shape, it may impact uh, speed of creation. However, um, as you've seen earlier on, it's actually not too long uh, if it's a standard shape, which allows you to create these uh, shapes that you need to do along a body. Also, another user case, uh, we found that um, on the right hand side, the image of a uh, window with a cutout okay, uh, in it, so which allows you to turn it across. Now, if you swept that, that shape across that body, you would have that cutout at that shape that's described in the image, which is really nice because it's actually easy to create this. Again, uh, two-part verification for documentation, as you can see, you could actually go in and verify which way you're going to cut if, if required. Another enhancement or another new feature is the unwrap feature that's been around. So this is really, really nice. Uh, what it does, it unwraps a set of uh, continuous faces in a single flat surface. So uh, very similar to the uh, flat pattern, but not really a flat pattern itself. Uh, what it does, it gives you a heat, heat area, so stretch area or pull area, if, if some people call it, of the way that a face is wrapped around that object. So, um, you know, it could be for fabric or stamped objects. Um, you can include this in your drawing itself, so you can put it in there and dimension it. Um, and we'll see shortly how this works. Okay, some of the tips and tricks for uh, the solid sweep again, uh, moving into it, uh, just, to, just to touch back on the solid sweep, avoid segments in your sketches. So if they overlap, you would have an issue with performance. If you're placing the tool body at the start of the sweep, okay, uh, it's, it's preferred to do that. Uh, the path is not required to be G1 tangent or G2 smooth, okay, if you're doing surfaces, right, continuous, but the best results are obtained with G2 continuous path. So uh, ideally you want the path to be as smooth as possible uh, to get better performance out of it. And when you create the tool body, use minimum amount, minimum amount of geometry, right? And avoid internal void. So uh, the tool body ideally should be solid. Um, try and if it doesn't need to be uh, have any curves or any fillets on it, try and avoid that. 
and this will allow the best uh, success for, compu for computation of the of inventor. And of course, if the sweep fails uh, to compute, try removing the tool body fillets. And in some cases, it may help to add fillets as well. So it just depends. It, you need to test it out to see what is the best for the tool body that you're working with. And again, the helical curve command creates an associative center axis. Uh, you can select it as the direct vector is aligned to the sweep. So you can actually see how this, um, how this, the tool body would behave on that axis. And adding a ball fillet to the tool body may improve uh, the computation times of it. So if it's nice and filleted around there, uh, it may or may or sometimes may not, but it needs to be uh, practiced and checked. Now, it's also used in various environments, like the packaging design, for instance. As you can see in here, uh, you know, if you do a solid sweep of that into the uh, bottom of it, you can see what it would look like, kind of like a mold or uh, something similar to a mold where you can see it copying, uh, cutting out the uh, object into the body below. Again, yeah, if you look at uh, something of the similar scenario, a fixture design, for instance, perhaps, uh, as you can see in there, as well as a playground slide. So not every day we design playground slides, but the solid sweep is really nice on this. Going back to the unwrap feature, uh, sorry, we jumped in and out, but if you look at it, this is a sheet metal body that's flat patterned. And if we take the, uh, go back to the folded part of it, under the unwrap feature in the 3D model environment, you can see by just picking faces, we're able to see what the unwrap of that face would look like. Okay, we can go in and merge the body results. Once we go OK, you see it comes up as a surface, which can, of course, be taken into a drawing. And we could add that to the drawing. And our display options, we just make sure it, surface bodies are included, so it shows in the drawing. And then, of course, we can dimension that. which makes it very nice. We get back to the model. We can go back to the folded part again. If we add some iLogic to it, if we change the shape using iLogic, as you can see here, what we do is we'd update or we'll uh, change the curve of it, go back to our drawing sheet and update the model. You would see there is an update to the surface that we've just put down or the uh, the unwrap that we've just put into the drawing. So it's really nice to actually look at um, and to work with because it gives us different various options that we could use. So unwrapping faces, okay, you can unwrap complex curvature or extreme deformation. That's one of the areas that you can use, use it for. Associated surface outputs, and also in context to the part control of the output position. So as you can see on screen, uh, looking at a piece of material that's wrapped around something, it's really great for that. Alternatively, looking at a piece of metal to see what the face would look like, okay? And we could create a dedicated view representation of that just from our model browser tree on the side by adding in, by clicking on the plus command and going in. When we in the command, we can actually uh, choose the presets that we're going to work with. OK, so let's have a look at uh, another part here. OK, we can unwrap that face out. And you see that it is unwrapping it to the face that we selected. So it picked up five faces. Again, the unwrap command uh, is actually quite nice. The dialog box that it works with is very easy to use. We can choose our properties dimension it. So using the annotate objects, we could go in and label it. And just by adding in the results, we could see that it is giving us the unwrap of the of the body itself directly in the 3D environment, which is really nice. 
Okay, so some of the features here, it's a dedicated view representation that we've created of it, and you'll show up in our in our model browser as well, uh, as a surface body, all right? Uh, well, it's based, it's called Unwrap, so whatever we name it as, you can see it shows up in there. It shows us a heat map of where it's stretched, the, the, the maximum stretch positions. Also, the uh, face chin and the, opposite, uh, the position at origin, so we can show where it is positioned. It gives us linear results, but also there's also some rigid results as well. And there's a merge body that we can also work with, as we've seen in the previous video. So unwrapping uh, unfoldable, uh, unfoldable flanges. So remember, with Inventor uh, sheet metal, sometimes some flanges cannot be uh, uh, folded, right? <clears throat> we can also use the unwrap tool to actually uh, unwrap it or flatten it out for us so we can see it. Uh, especially something like a car seat, a cover for it, perhaps. Uh, you could actually unwrap that and see what it looks like. And also an exhaust system. So again, this would be sheet metal rolled, and we could actually uh, unwrap that out and look at the shape that it creates for us. So the unwrap tool is very nice. We're going to jump into the frame generator now. So for the users that use frame generators and work with it, uh, you'll find that there's been some really nice improvements here. One of it is the in-canvas editing, of the origin points of it. So, you know, just by clicking on the points, you could actually modify the direction or the shape of the way it goes in. The notching of it is actually quite nice because it opens up a little notching window uh, on, the, on the browser tree, uh, and you can actually see what that uh, notch is doing, what it looks like, right? Uh, and of course, you've got options to extend profile or is it uh, using a basic profile? as well as adjust the gap between the notches, okay? And <clears throat> with the addition of end caps, it makes it very, very nice and easy to work with. Now let's have a look at this. We'll insert an end cap, these four areas. And of course, you could have customized end caps in here, or you could use the standard out the box end caps. And by inputting the sizes and thicknesses of it there, you add them in and you can see how it behaves. Now we've chosen a chamfered end cap there, so you can see the corners are chamfered for us, perhaps for welding. And this one has a slight offset of it. <clears throat> so it makes it quite nice and easy to work with because we could do a, uh, uh, a base uh, features as well as end cap features on it as well. Okay, so the frame generator enhancements has been really nice. Or so looking at them, uh, you know, from a from a numbering point of view, you, uh, you know, when you place in a member and you OK it, uh, the file file numbering defaults page opens up. Here you can actually uh, modify this. Now I've had some questions in the past about how do we use customized numbering in here. This is one of the ways you could do that, right? <clears throat> Placement orientation of it, uh, as we've seen, um, you know, as you've spoken about, it's quite easy to actually orientate them. The end caps, as we've seen now, it's quite easy to put in. You can use out the box uh, the end caps that come with it. Alternatively, you could add them, create your own end caps and add them to the content center and pull them out when used. The miter function is actually very nice because in the previous releases of Inventor, whenever you miter something, you would have to go in and miter one. Uh, one well, one joint at one entry at a time. Uh, here you can do multiple, uh, and you know, it avoids you from going in and clicking OK uh, or apply, and then choosing the next phase for miter. So it's actually quite nice. So the numbering scheme of it, the numbering side of it. So it's a free configuration for all kinds of frame members, parts, uh, and assemblies. <clears throat> Each uh, area can be configured separately. All right, as you can see on the screenshot in there. And it's easier for handling in the data management system like Vault, for instance. <clears throat> if you look at the frame generator, the place and orientation tool. So in here, the placement and orientation of the profiles is possible. So if you click on one of these, uh, one of the dots or the, or the placement dots, if you don't call them that, uh, will allow you to actually adjust it. So previously, you'd have to go back into the frame generator panel and uh, that window that opens up and adjust it from there. Here you can do it directly on the model itself. Right? And uh, with the improvement preview, uh, this makes it obviously, of course, much more easier. So 20.1 20, 20 is out, so you'd, and 2020, so you'd be able to actually access this via that. 
So if we look at the rotation axis, you can modify rotation axis on it. Uh, you could go in and if the rotation axis is selected, you could go in and modify that directly in the model as we looked at just now. Or of course, go in and change the part from the ribbon if, if this is not gonna work. So if you look at the mitre side of it, again, uh, we say that the interface is slightly different uh, than previous. Uh, you use a multi-select, so multi-select mitres. So instead of doing just one at a time, you can do multi-select mitres. And this was available from 2019.1. So if you still on 2019 and we haven't moved to 2019.1, uh, you could actually update it and also uh, have, a, have a preview of the mitring or work with the metric system. However, in 2020, this is, this is out of the box standard. <clears throat> okay, in, in caps, as we've seen, uh, is there's a little tool now that says insert in cap. This is where you'd go in and actually insert your in cap uh, for, the, for the frame. And of course, uh, the placement of it and the profile that you're gonna actually uh, use for that in cap. And of course, if there's a customized end cap that you need to do, as mentioned, you can save that to your content center and allow it to uh, be available. Bottom shows us the outward positions and the inward positions that it can go. So it can go outside of the frame member itself or inside. And of course, if it's going inside, you'd wanna have a chamfer around it if there's welding that needs to go in. So again, if you look at uh, something like the um, chassis of this, of this little go-kart here. This is done using the frame member, well, frame generator. And if you look at the frame members, this is based off the skeleton that's, that's there. Uh, on the right-hand side, you can actually see that this is quite nicely done uh, using the frame generator tool. <clears throat> if you look at the notching that went into that frame uh, for the chassis, you find that um, if it's hollow or, or tubing, uh, so a circular tubing that you're using, uh, circular hollow that you're using uh, the, with the notch, uh, notching um, dialog box that opens up you'll find that it's a lot better visually to preview what's going on uh, if you do perpendicular cut you can actually specify a gap on that as well as you can see on screen which allows us to either do end treatments to that from that end treatment so if it, there's going to be welding that needs to go onto that we can actually specify the distance of that and do the preparations in here Again, if we're doing uh, frame members, uh, you know, like eye sections, for instance, if we open it up, the notching again is available in both. So for circular members, as well as the um, uh, structural members as well that we work with. And of course, there's the uh, customization. So you can add customize customized uh, libraries to it, the, the customized members to the libraries that you wanna do in there. So the search part in the library and the copy a, a profile, uh, or the read-only profile, read-write profile library is in there, which allows us to actually make it easier to work with. And you can open them directly from the content center once they're copied into the uh, content library. So step one would be uh, adding in a uh, notch, right? Or notch profile, for instance, as a customized um, option. If we look at it in here, when we add in the uh, custom profile preparations for what we're doing, we can enter the sketch on the body, Define the notch geometry, which is defined in blue, as you can see on screen, and save that profile out, right? If we go to structural shape authoring, so again, we've got to click on the editor, so we have to make sure we're in the uh, authoring side of it. We can define the notch geometry in there, uh, uh, extract a feature out of it, so basically going and extracting a structural shape, and define the notch geometry in the structural shape authoring tool, and make sure that in step four, we allow it a notch profile as shown on screen and of course step five would be to replace the family template in the content center editor as we can see in there and the library must show the read write okay and that's how we would add in a uh, customized member into the library so if we look at some of the feature creation improvements this is the final bit that we're going to look at uh, one of the one of the really nice things that I've found uh, to be really productive is the uh, the sketching or when doing this extrude command. Uh, we'll have a look at that. So what happens in here, as you can see on the screen on the left, okay, native support for loop and region functions. So we could go in and select multi-select, and we get that shape. And if we go in and 
select again onto the areas that we don't want to perhaps put in, we could actually exclude them from our extrusion. And then, of course, go back and create a separate extrusion of that shape, as you can see in there, which is really, really nice, right? If we look at the, um, the taper, uh, that's there. It's always been there, but it's actually more refreshed now, so it's more easy accessed uh, in the extrude command. You can see that it uh, it also handles multiple loops uh, and draft faces quite nicely. Okay, so the design enhancement here, the big one, is the extrude taper option. Okay, which is uh, which has been there uh, previously. It was under the more tab uh, where you'd have to go into it. Often ignored. The merge faces, the loop and region detection, as well as the highlight and close regions, as you can see in there, and of course, sketch blocks. Okay, as we see earlier on. So we can leverage more complex sketches easily within the extrude command as out the box solution. Again, if we look at that video again, if we look at it, we can go in and pick up certain areas, certain parts to go and extrude. Alternatively, pick up the full body and exclude areas that we don't need. So we're gonna actually extrude that 10 mils. And if we click on the plus sign to add another extrusion, we could go in and <clears throat> extrude the back of it to get that shape. And of course, merging sketches, sketches that merge into to each other, go in, place the taper command, taper that 15 degrees, and you can see how it behaves, which is really nice to actually work with. So that brings us to the end of this deep dive into some of the new features. I hope it has been insightful with regards to um, just productivity and just users. So these are like really nice quick tips uh, to actually work off. If you have any questions, uh, now's the time. You can type it in the, in the chat box and we can take it from there. So I'll give you a couple of minutes. I think some questions. So Okay, so any questions that you have, uh, please just type it into the chat box and we can answer them. Alternatively, if there's no questions uh, that may come to mind now, you can always get in touch with us. Uh, my email is daniel at bakerbains.com or alternatively info at bakerbains or give us a shout at uh, the telephone number provided on screen. Okay, so no questions from the users. Uh, thank you very much for joining the webinar. Uh, look to see you on the next one. Um, the next would be scheduled, so you'd have an invite as per usual. So please join in um, and thank you for the great comments about the information provided. Uh, if there's any more questions that you have, please feel free to get in contact and have a great weekend ahead. Thank you very much.